On the news at 10, we're staying with the new attack strategies deployed by terrorists. We're learning what Boko Haram is planning to do is attack critical infrastructure in a bid to cripple the nation's economy. That's according to the Nigerian army. Sifo Nesen reports. The spike in terror attacks in northwest Nigeria has put security forces on edge. The latest attacks reveal a change in tactics by the assailants. The Nigerian army authorities understand the shift is meant to affect the economy. The adversaries have changed their tactics and are focused on kidnapping for ransom, attacking the nation's critical infrastructure, such as rail lines, power lines, communication networks, airports, etc., which is intended to cause paralysis in the country. That's why this forum is holding with the aim of inculcating a winning mentality in troops. The volatile and complex security emergencies facing the nation has necessitated the continuous review of the national security architecture to contain the threats, varied acts of insurgency, terrorism, kidnapping and banditry from Boko Haram terrorists, Islamic State of West Africa province, to the indigenous people of Biafra and other terrorist organizations has continued to pose substantive threats to the nation. But the task of defeating the terrorists is enormous, requiring a mix of kinetic and non-kinetic approach. At the end of the day, it all boils down to matching words with appropriate action. Sifon ACN, TVC News, Abuja. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives says it will probe the operational lapses by Nigeria security agencies, which has led to inadequate intelligence. It also called for the immediate suspension of the savings scheme of the National Hajj Commission over alleged lack of transparency and accountability. Jokadisa reports. Nigeria is in the throes of security challenges. Lawmakers say they will continue to seek lasting solution to the wave of insecurity across virtually every part of the country. As it's been happening for the past, uh, Dennis Idahosa is from Edo State. He says terrorism, kidnappings, killings, and all manner of vices happen due largely to lack of intelligence gathering among security bodies and seeks a probe. And the lack of professional handling of sensitive in intelligence information has led to the colossal loss of lives and property across the country, particularly in the northeast and the northwest zone. In a matter of urgent public importance, Aminu Mani from Casino State calls for the suspension of the saving scheme of the National Hajj Commission. There is lack of transparency, proper accountability in the savings, Hajj savings scheme. Failure to tackle it will lead to corruption in the system and dis disregard for the Eastern law. House resolves to investigate the allegation. Lagos moved closer to having a federal medical center in Ibejuleki as the bill, sponsored by Adebayo Balogun, passed second reading. I rise to move a motion on a bill for an act to establish the federal medical center in Ibejuleki, Lagos State, for related and related matters. The legislators also called on the federal government to establish a sustainable policy that will phase out non-energy efficient appliances. Using energy efficient appliances and equipment minimizes the exploitation of natural resources such as natural gas, coal, water, diesel, petrol. The ministers of health and women affairs have a date with the house as it investigates the trend of cryptic pregnancies in recent times. This trend which has pervaded the Nigerian space where women are falsely pronounced pregnant by persons who impersonate as doctors, nurses, and midwives. These impersonators refer to this fraud as cryptic pregnancy. A letter from Mr. President read by the Speaker seeks amendments to the medium-term expenditure framework to fund increase in budget deficit, which rose by 965.42 billion naira. Jokayadza, TVC News, Abuja. In Kaduna, a group of pastors who are also members of the Interfaith Alliance have staged a peaceful protest against the reckless killings and kidnapping of citizens by armed groups in the state. The cleric are asking the government to be more proactive in addressing the nation's security challenges. Lupia Sam has details. 
no more, it's enough of the bloodshed. These pastors are worried at the current security situation in Kaduna State. They cite incidents of reckless maiming of residents by terrorists, which is now almost becoming a daily occurrence. They are out to protest against what they describe as a dangerous blend of killings and kidnappings by bandits. They want the government to be more proactive and take drastic measures in addressing the situation. Instead of waiting for them to launch an attack before we come out with the fire brigade approach, I think wisdom demands that they should be preempted. Wisdom, the, someone says that prevention is better than cure. So the government and the security agencies should do everything possible to prevent these attacks. And it's not just about preventing these attacks. Since they know the various camps where they are located, I think wisdom requires that these camps should be cleared so that we can have peace, we can have rest. But they also believe kinetic operations by security operatives must be supported by constant prayers by clerics. We know the government and the security agencies are putting in their efforts, but one of the things we have realized as leaders of the various spiritual faiths is that this fight is beginning to overwhelm the government. Therefore, there is a need for some spiritual divine support. We believe that there is a place for the kinetic approach of this fight, but there is also a place for the spiritual approach to these efforts. And at the gates of the Kashim Ibrahim House, the clerics say a prayer for the president, governor of Kaduna State, and the security forces. Their earnest desire is that an end is put to the shedding of blood by terrorists. Apart from the pastors, other residents feel the response of the government is way below what is expected. The terrorists have become bolder, and with the frequency of attacks, the people say they now need more than assurances to guarantee their safety. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna. Still on security, gunmen have attacked the headquarters of Agota local government area of Anambra, where Governor Chukumasoludo hails from. The incident happened earlier today, with some of the buildings set ablaze during the attack. Security officials and men of the fire service arrived to the scene of the incident to put the situation under control. Thursday's incident is the latest in a long list of gunmen attacks on government and security facilities in the southeast and the state in particular. Chief of Naval Staff says no single country or region can tackle maritime insecurity without collaborative effort. He stated this at the ceremony of the first joint Nartera European Union collaborative efforts uh, event held in Lagos. Senior correspondent I. B. Kano reports. Events. It is only customary for visitors to meet at the flag officer commanding conference room to sign and exchange gifts, and this the visiting navies did. Your efforts definitely has uh, helped us to make the sea search safe. Um, there have been collaborations in areas of training, equipment, and of course, joint exercises. From there, the European Union delegation, which had ambassadors of Spain, Italy, Denmark, and others, headed to meet minds with their Nigerian counterparts on how to tackle insecurity challenges on the Gulf of Guinea. The collaboration, the Chief of Naval Staff says, couldn't have come at a better time. Nigeria Navy calls for enhanced collaboration with EU and coastal states within the framework of Yaoundé architecture on information and intelligence sharing in order to bridge the apparent existing communication gap. For the European Union and the ambassadors present, Nigeria plays a significant role in the successes so far achieved. This internal mechanism of coordination, it is at your service. It has no other purpose that to complement your efforts. The work against uh, uh, criminality in the sea uh, can only uh, succeed if done uh, in full coordination with the navies, coastal states, and under their leadership. The prevailing situation demonstrates clearly the intimate connections between economic prosperity and security. In today's difficult situation, the Nigerian Navy 
is naturally given the role as instrument of diplomacy and leadership in the region and credible standing on the global stage. The chief of the naval staff led all to witness a capacity demonstration at the NNSB Croft jetty. And the aim of this is to further deepen the relationship between the European Union and the Nigerian Navy at adequately securing the Gulf of Guinea. Also, during this visit, there will be a two-day sea exercise between the Nigerian Navy, Spanish Navy, and the Italian Navy. Ivy Cano, TVC News, Lagos. About 90% of real estate transactions in Lagos State are handled by unskilled persons. This has resulted in several cases of fraud and other sharp practices in the state. Kemi Foladeyemo has more. In February 2022, Governor Babajide Sonwolu enacted the last rural law with the aim of restoring professionalism and sanity in the real estate sector. The law mandates the state's real estate regulatory agency to receive, investigate, and mediate on all complaints between tenants and agents as well as landlords and issue permits to all practitioners, including lawyers. Since we started off with Las Rera, we have actually attended to over 120 petitions. We have done recoveries for citizens. We've um, actually also started um, prosecution on behalf of citizens. The authority will also register and issue permits um, to all those that are involved in real estate transactions. It will register tenancy agreements below five years. The reason for this is because five years and above is a, is it becomes a registrable instrument and that is in the purview of the land registry. That is a work in progress. There is still a lot of areas to be dealt with. And why the government must do this thing is fundamental. Because the failure of government to regulate the real estate, any eventuality ideally, the public is supposed to hold the government capable. And that's why they must be proactive. The forum affords business lawyers a platform to vent their concerns on practicing under this new law. This agency already exists. So what they have done is to amplify the powers of the agency. And I thought to myself, we have several agencies already. In fact, I was going through a list of legal states, but as state as I found over 70. And let's not forget that mediation is not compulsory. You are not under any obligation or compulsion to attend to any invitation for mediation. So at the end of the day, the jurisdiction still goes back to the courts. We're talking about international best practices. We're talking about what obtains in other countries. And we just need to, because Lagos right now, there's so much development going on. The Lagos State Government is also offering a new policy to residents called the monthly rent payment option, which is set to take off soon. Kemi Foladeyemo, TVC News, Lagos. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has expressed the commitment of the federal government to improve the science and technology sector in the country. The vice president said this move is to give a better future to citizens. He stated this during a one-day official visit to Borneo State. The 2.5 billion naira project being commissioned in the University of Maiduguri is a two-story building with a 1,300 seating capacity and an international conference and learning center built by a business mogul and philanthropist Muhammadu Indimi. The building was commissioned on the 23rd of December 2021 by President Muhammadu Buhari and is now to be handed over to the institution by the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. Vice President Yemi Oshimajo reaffirms the government's commitment to uplifting the science and technology in the country. Knowledge is the key to lifting billions of our people. It is the lifeblood of economic empowerment and wealth. It is the guarantee of a better life for our people. Education has become a great for life that we give command and congratulate and I can It is my sincere hope that the facility shall add value to the university programs and be optimally used for purpose that will benefit 
The state government and the University of Maiduguri appreciate Muhammadu Indemi for this laudable project. This is another vice government and boosting of our resilience in critical infrastructure development as it affects the education sector. The whole center for this and learning could be a tremendous infrastructure benefit to the University of Maiduguri in particular and for the state. The complex was conceived and designed to provide space and facilities for various activities associated with modern day learning. It is a two-story building designed to suit the tropical island climate of Nairobi. The edifice is expected to host any kind of conference in the country and beyond. Jesse Tafida, TVC News, Maiduguri. The newly elected chairman of the All Progressives Congress has visited President Mohamed Buhari at the Asrock Villa. This move is to thank him for providing leadership for the party all through the transition period leading to the National Convention. The National Chairman was accompanied by the former chairman of the Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Governor May Malabani. President Buhari urged the new chairman to be fair and firm as he is known to be in all his dealings. State House correspondent Femi Akonde reports. The predecessor and his successor have come to see Mr. President. It is the first time the national chairman of the APC will meet President Muhammad Buhari after the March 26th National Convention where he emerged as the party's consensus candidate. The president believes the party has survived through turbulent times and is ready to face the challenges of the coming state and general elections. The new chairman is President Muhammad Buhari's most preferred choice and he has been told to be fair and firm. Senator Abdullah Adamu's first job will be to unite the party. I don't remember any convention that there were misgivings about the possibility of his success than this one. We came out clean. And uh, we thought the leadership that Mr. President provided the, 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 the party has made all this possible. So I came with my predecessor to come and uh, touch base with the, with the President and to, with gratitude. Being fulfilled, especially uh, having uh, conducted a Rankofri seamless convention. But the APC national chairman does not foreclose the possibility of adopting consensus in choosing a presidential flag bearer for the party, just as it was done at the national convention. Already the number of entrants into the presidential race is swelling, and this could be a cause of concern for the APC as it desperately tries to manage conflicting political interests and keep the party together ahead of the general elections. We get there, we will talk. All right, but uh, the, op the options are there: direct primaries, indirect, and consensus. The party has a choice which of these paths it will take. President Muhammad Buhari is still confident that his administration's achievements in the economy, specifically in the development of agriculture, infrastructure, ICT, and the welfare of the masses, will give Nigerians reasons to vote for the APC at the polls. As politicking gets intense ahead of the 2023 general elections, all eyes will be on Senator Abdullahi Adamu to see if indeed he will be firm and fair to all. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. TVC Communications has once again proven it's a great place to work through good healthcare and safe environment for its employees. The company joined the rest of the world to mark World Health Day, where it also advocated the promotion of good health. Inyolu Apopola reports. Access to quality health care is a battle that has gone on for years, especially in Nigeria. While it is a prerequisite for good health, climate crisis remains one of the leading causes of deaths. As the World Max Health Day, CVC Communications also organized a forum to deal with health issues while staff members got clarification on how to live a healthy lifestyle. There are things that we do that con unconsciously uh, kind of depreciate our health and also doesn't um, help the planet in which we live. And I think that um, 
uh, taking the time to celebrate it today and to focus on it today helps us um, pay more attention to those things so that in in some ways we can mitigate those um, actions. While it might be important to know about living a healthy life, it takes all its citizens to ensure that the environment is conducive to live in. The environment, we are all stakeholders, from governments to businesses to families to individuals. It's a collective responsibility. Um, the, the benefits will not just be drivable overnight. So it has to be sustained, has to be intentional, and we have to keep doing it and doing it until over time we might be able to reverse some of the trends that are already setting in our environment. The staff also used the opportunity to ask salient questions relating to their health. It was not just a forum, but staff members were privileged to consult with doctors, check their blood pressure, sugar level, among others. Say some of my colleagues and in other departments that are in one way or the other that uh, they don't know how to handle their health or physical issue and they don't know how to the importance of exercise but I believe that when they have hear this lecture today and I think they have adapted one or two things in it and I believe they will work on it. World Health Day is celebrated every year to promote good health but in the face of a polluted society, there is need for urgent attention in creating a sustainable and rich environment. In Niolua, Pokola, TVC News, Lagos. A federal high court in Abuja has refused to declare vacant the seats of Governor Ben Ayadi and his deputy over his defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. Justice Taiwo Taiwo departed from his earlier judgment and held on to the decision of the Court of Appeal delivered on 11th April to the effect that defection is not an offence under the Nigerian Constitution. Judiciary correspondent Celestina Iria reports. Justice Taiwo Taiwo held that governors and their deputies can only be removed from office in line with Section 180, 188 and 189 of the Constitution, which stipulates that the elective office holders can only be removed from office on the account of debt, resignation or impeachment. Justice Taiwo Taiwo said that since defection is not one of the constitutional provisions, no court has the power to insert such in the supreme law. The People's Democratic Party have predicated its suit on the fact that Senator Ayade and his deputy, presently member of the APC, did not win the 9th March 2019 governorship election in Cross River State, having defected to the APC. I thank him for his awesomeness. I thank him for being the Lord of Laws and the God of Gods. I salute him in his fullness and royal majesty. I greet him with full adoration and glory. I give him the entire victory. It is not mine, it is his. He merely used me as a pencil to write. May God's name be eternally praised, now and forever and ever. Amen. The court held that the defection of Governor Ayade and his deputy from the PDP to the APC is unfair. The court also has no power to remove them from office. Celestina area, TVC News, Abuja. Nigerian students who return from Ukraine are now being provided psychosocial support more than a month after the return to the country. This has been organized by the Nigerian and Diaspora Commission and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons with voluntary services from doctors and other medical personnel under the services of Project Victory Corps uh, initiative. Moyo Thomas has details of this story and will return with the business news. Feintola, a final year medical student in Sumi, Ukraine, went through a harrowing experience while trying to escape the war in Ukraine. It was an added burden for him being the president of Nigerian Students' Union. The situation was not, uh, it was trauma. The situation was very brutal. It was uh, terrible experiences for most of us. That a lot of students were angry. People were angry at me specifically, you know, they were like, oh, Mr. President, why didn't you do something? You know, it was a lot of trauma because I remember having meetings with authorities, you know, at that moment before the situation started. And that is where the old trauma started. 
Now that some of the students are back, they are faced with how uncertain the future of their education looks, which is another level of trauma for them. They are making uh, concessions for online schooling. Uh, most people will continue school online. Some already started, actually. And uh, the next issue is, okay, how do we, mostly medical students, how do we continue? I mean, how do we live life on online? This is what the two-day clinic hopes to help them resolve. When we have occasion, events that exposes individuals to trauma, it is better that we nip them in the board. The social support is the core of rehabilitation. I'm so glad because this won't only provide a platform for the Ukrainian returnees, this will also create a forum for the commission to begin to you know, collaborate strongly with the academia. While records say over 6,000 Nigerian students were in Ukraine, less than 2,000 of these returned with the federal government's provision. Abike Dabirerewa decried the maltreatment of Nigerians who stayed back in Poland as they faced discrimination and racism. I know that as I speak with you, there's another crisis brewing. Some of the returnees who went to Poland and refused to come back and are not properly documented are now locked up in detention centers under very inhumane condition. The chairman of NEEDCOM also assures that the psychosocial services will be provided across the six geopolitical regions of the country. According to medical experts, trauma such as this, if not quickly nipped in the board, could lead to mental health issues. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja.